Nowadays sci-fi is mostly known for having cardboard cutouts run away from aliens while shooting lasers or something, and I refuse to call them characters, but it's a genre that has evolved over time and then devolved as a result. Sci-fi originally evolved from a subgenre that's practically dead now, adventure novels. Stories about sailors going off into adventures and finding unknown lands inspired people to go further and asking what if they went off into adventure underneath the water, or the gods, or what if the sky? And since journey novels were written in excruciating detail, early sci-fi writers uh, used the same sorts of tools uh, to tell their stories, but using what science uh, was telling them at the time. They grounded every fantastical idea about aliens or the moon or Mars on real science. Similarly, people like Mary Shelley, a couple of decades before Jules Verne, but quite a few centuries after Lucien of Samos, uh, not sure how to pronounce it, wrote a more personal story about a scientist doing experiments which seemed at the time fantastical yet realistic. Arguably, it's the first sci-fi novel, Frankenstein, but Arguably. Second World War, Turing's discovery of an electronic computer, the uh, space race, the uh, almost alien airplanes that were seen in America. These things furthered people's imaginations, but they also made them more pulpy. Most sci-fi at this time was pretty lackluster, so when uh, Kubrick and Clark made 2001, both versions of it, they made a conscious effort to be more in line with old-school cerebral sci-fi novels instead of the monster flicks. After the success of it, you'd Think that they wouldn't make another lowbrow sci-fi again. So that worked for around nine years. Star battle, episode whatever, a fairy tale in space is exactly that, a fairy tale in space. George Lucas took the classic hero's journey formula and just put it in space, not a bad idea at all, and coupled with stellar visual effects almost on par with 2001, this resulted in a fun adventure movie some people saw in the late 70s. Oh, and a multi-billion dollar franchise and a ton of imitators. The unprecedented success of Star Wars was so enormous that it changed Hollywood. Every movie still to this day wants to copy some aspects of it. It's like the American Neo Genesis Evangelion, a good story blown way out of proportion and for some reason inspiring multiple generations despite it just being pretty good. One day I'll make a video about how overrated Star Wars really is, subscribe to see when I get off my lazy arse and do it. Inspiration is a great thing and a lot of films and shows have improved and built upon Star Wars and even though nothing has surpassed 2001, it too has not been forgotten by filmmakers and its imagery echoes throughout the industry. That's not even an inspiration, that's just straight up the monolith, just with a cloud filter on top of it. It's like if I made a cartoon show about a green sponge who lives in a pineapple under the sea, but if you think the influence of Star Wars is great now, then it's unimaginable in the late 70s and 80s. Every producer dusted off their old sci-fi pile they had been lying around the office as paperweight and asked, what do we got? Among which we have some Roger Corman beef leg. Alien. Yeah, I'm doing Alien next. Check out my other videos, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, thanks.